This is the HyperX Pulsefire Haste 2 Wireless, a follow-up to one of the best gaming mice, the Pulsefire Haste. In this video, I will take a look at what's changed compared to the first one. I will go through some of the possibly controversial changes and whether or not this is a worthy upgrade to what is one of the best gaming mice you can buy. At the end of the video, I'll show you how this mouse has made me an insane gamer as well. I am talking god tier professional esport world champion player man. HyperX has made some amazing gaming products, at least from what I tried. They made the HyperX cloud headset, which was used by almost everybody back in the day. We have the HyperX Origin 60, one of my favorite gaming keyboards, and obviously the Pulsefire Haste. What was it about the first one that made it so special? This mouse achieved a great combination of great shape, weight, affordability, shape, affordability, weight and performance. In both the wired and wireless versions it felt like you were getting a very well made mouse that was built to last. It was even water resistant so you could shower with it. The only downside that this mouse had was the sensor which was using a 3335, which isn't a bad sensor but it is a downside. So it's something that the Pulsefire Haze 2 needs to improve on. So what has changed with the new one and does it keep what made the first one so successful? Visually the holes have been filled in, a trend that has thankfully died. But because there's no holes there's no longer a possibility that fluids can get inside it unless you really tried. So that means there is no IP rating anymore which means there won't be a funny cutaway of me pouring water on it. There is another minor change on the outside and that is the main buttons now surround the scroll wheel completely. And lastly, the biggest change from what I can tell, the HyperX logo on the side no longer has a trademark symbol on it. Now let's take a look at what's been upgraded internally and see if it's now level to what is expected by today's standards. Thankfully, the sensor that was the downside of the previous version has been given a huge upgrade to the new 3395. This is the big boy sensor going at the moment. All the mice are using it with one exception, yeah. Zowie. This sensor features in both the wired and wireless versions. There is an added bonus with the wired one, which I'll get onto very shortly shortly though. But the final internal major change is the switches. Previously they used some TTC gold switches which sounded like this. And now they're using HyperX's own switches which sound like this. Now I know what you're thinking, can any of these changes get you out of bronze? No. Nothing can. But in regards to the hardware changes, the sensor is a large upgrade. It is going to be a lot more reliable and power efficient. HyperX says that this will get around 100 hours of constant motion with RGB turned off. They don't specify which polling rate, but I think it's safe to assume that it's 1000 Hz, which is very good. The wired version gets up to 8000 Hz polling rate. This is honestly just a high number that's not going to have any noticeable impact on how well you're going to play. Essentially there is a few bottlenecks which means that at the moment not everybody's going to get the benefits out of higher polling rate. It's a bit strange that the wireless one is just 1000Hz without any option of an increased polling rate but who knows. Maybe this can be enabled with a software update in the future but I'll touch more on this a bit later. The new switches feel very consistent and crispy. They are a lot better than the previous TTC golds that were on the old ones. Now it's really hard to stack switches up against each other because there's just so many mice that have to go through these days. But these switches feel like some of the best that I have used. Now before I get to the very important parts, just a quick run through the shape. For those familiar with the previous version, the shape is the same from what I can tell, so there's no nasty surprises. For those that haven't used a haste before, this is an ambidextrous design that is designed for all grip types. There aren't any areas that really stick out or could make a certain grip type feel uncomfortable. The only thing is that maybe those with large hands might find this a bit too small. Personally, this mouse has been really comfortable. I've had no issues with discomfort at all. And for someone at my age of 82, it's important to keep my brittle bones healthy. Now we are entering into some of the critically important stuff for the Haze 2, which is the quality and the pricing. What was great with the original Haze was how affordable it was. Well, for this one, there is a price increase of about $10 for both the wired and wireless versions, which considering the upgrades, I think is very good. The best thing as well is it comes with a two year warranty as well. So it's covered for two years as long as you don't spill your Mountain Dew on it or misuse it. And that leads to the next important part. 
and that is what made the haste amazing and that is the quality the first one for me really did set a high standard for affordable high performance mice and what quality can be achieved this blows it out of the way there's no rattle creaks wobbles or anything at all on this mouse i honestly cannot fault it so overall this is a worthy upgrade to me this is an amazing mouse the quality is amazing the performance is great it feels feels good to hold there's just so many things that this mouse has done right that it might actually be a flawless mouse i think maybe the only downside to this is the fact that it doesn't have increased polling rate support especially as we are approaching the point where some people will actually get the benefits from a 2000 or 4000 hertz polling rate having said that this is just the first one but a lot better there's nothing groundbreakingly new but you're getting something that is going to serve you for a very long time so i'd highly recommend buying it it even makes you good at games don't believe me I wouldn't have been able to do that with a low quality mouse, I'll tell you now. And if you're wanting to have a look at some other great wireless gaming mice, there's a video on screen now you can watch.